we are going to have a think about the fact that over the last week, week and a bit, we have sort of been learning how to use a variety of different tools in the topic of, what topic is it? Probability. Probability. Thank you. So we've been understanding the chances of different things happening. Anush, thank you. And probability is the field of mathematics that helps us to understand that. Now, I want you to put yourself in the position of being like someone who is, oh, I was going to use the phrase handyman, but handy person, you know, you're someone who's really good at fixing things, then you don't just know how to use a particular tool, you also have the skill of knowing when is the right time to use one tool or another. Now, bless you, so far, we've had a look at a couple of big concepts and a couple of different visual tools. And then what we did was we would say, oh, here's a visual tool for you. And then now I'm going to give you an exercise that lets you use that tool over and over again. Okay? What we're going to do now is a little different. I'm going to give you a series of problems and it's going to be up to you to work out what is the appropriate tool to use in this situation. It won't be immediately obvious and that's why I want us to make the heading of probability overview. I want us to very rapidly, and I only want to spend about five minutes on this, very rapidly rehearse what are the, and there are four, what are the two big ideas and two different visual tools that we've learned over the last little bit that help us understand probability. So I'm going to number them, one, two, three, and four. Firstly, when we think about probability, Right? Number one, because we talk about probability over and over again, we stop writing the word because um, it's, it's a waste of time. We're like, we know that the letter P, the capital letter P, we're just going to use that to indicate probability. If you want to work out the probability of some kind of event, then we state all probabilities as a number um, between 0 and 1. And you can have 0 or 1. If you had an event with a probability of 0, what would that mean? It's never going to happen. You had an event that had a probability of 1, it would mean... 100% certainty is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, going to happen. So our probabilities always lie between 0 and 1. They are a fraction. What goes on the top, on the numerator of our fraction? Anve? You, okay, so, yes, it is called the numerator. Can someone tell me, and this is, what is the numerator? Anush? Number of favorable outcomes. Number of favorable outcomes, thank you. Can we all write that down, just as Anush said? So these are... The outcomes that we're interested in, the favorable outcomes, the outcomes that make that event take place. Okay, um, That's on the top of my very long and awkward fraction. And then can someone help me work out what's on the denominator? Jessica? Number of outcomes in sample space. Okay, the number of outcomes in the sample space, or if you like, um, to write it in a way that is sort of parallel to this, you could say the number of possible outcomes. That's another way to describe how big is the sample space? So the key words are favorable and possible, right? What are the ones you're interested in? And then what can actually take place? What is possible? Like on a die, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the possible outcomes. Okay, so that was the first big idea. The second big idea was we said, you know, some events can combine together with others. They're kind of like two sides of the same coin. And we called that a word starting with C. Does anyone remember? Complement. Thank you. And um, we remembered, it's a bit tricky. You spell the complement not with an I, but with an E. Thank you. Otherwise, you're just saying, hey, um, you did a great job, right? Now, the complement, we would say if you've got some event E, then the complement we would write as an E with a bar over the top, or you could just say not E, or you could name what the complement was. If I said, okay, the probability of an event I'm interested in might be rolling a six on a die, what would that probability be, by the way? One out of six. One out of six, very good. So I'm actually going to jot that down at the top here. The probability of rolling a six would be one out of six. There's only one favorable outcome on the die, and there are six possible. I could say the complement of that, right? The probability of the complement, I could just name what are all of the other things that could happen. What, what are all the other things that can happen apart from a six? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, one, all through five, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. What is that probability, by the way? Five out of six. There's five different possible outcomes. Sorry, five different favorable outcomes. And it's still the same six that are possible. Now, the way that we wrote that, noticing that these two probabilities are not just random. They're connected. What do they add up to? One. 
they add up to one because they're all the possible outcomes, right? So we could say that the probability of an event plus the probability of its complement, that's equal to one, right? And we notice we could use that fact if you wanted to know the probability of an event, you could actually work out the opposite of that, which is sometimes easier, and subtract that from one. So we had a look at that last week as well. Now, to round this out, there were then two visual tools that we used to help us understand different situations in probability. They both required us to draw, whoops, draw some diagrams. Does anyone remember what the first kind of diagram was? It was named after a guy. Venn. Venn diagrams, very good. Venn diagrams. Um, when do we use Venn diagrams? When are they particularly useful? What do you think, Roshan? Well, yeah. Overlapping. When there are two things that are overlapping, exactly right. So maybe, in fact, we might just draw a very small Venn diagram here just to give us a visual cue. So as Roshan said, that's perfect. There you go. Two things that are overlapping. Um, sometimes you could even have more, but we just stayed at this level of complexity. Then there was one other kind of thing that we used for Shaka. Two-way tables. Fantastic. So these also are helpful when you're understanding some... Um, different groups or categories, but sometimes, and it depends on the situation, um, a table is a much easier way to illustrate all the numbers, and generally, they look something like this. Whoops, I need another row. That's better. And then we would describe, you know, like say boys and girls, um, you know, brown eyes, blue eyes, things like that. And these were the main tools that we used to visualize, okay?